Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is my Meyer snowplow. If you notice, the mold board isn't on the front here. It's actually right behind it, standing up vertically. And I did this for storage way back in 2020, when I first purchased the forklift in this pallet rack system. This was just a really convenient way to store this. I think I'll always do this in the future. I got this on wheels, we can roll this around anywhere in the shop, and it takes up way less space. Problem. The hinge pins for the mold board were so rusted solid that there was no way they were coming out. They were just welded in there. They're still in there. I actually had to cut them in two to get the mold board off. It's really snowy outside. It's cold, it's windy, and it's blowing. And I can't really do a whole lot with my snowplow without the mold board. Let's see if we can't get these pins, old hinge pins out, make some new pins, and get the mold board back on the snowplow bracket. So here's what's left of one of the pins. I mean, it was just welded for the most part in there. Here's the other half, still stuck in this side. Need to try to get that out of there. It's actually, they don't make it very convenient to get that out of there. There's a small hole there, offset. Right there, you gotta try to pound that out of there. And with the mold board here, it's extremely difficult. Oh, she might be coming out. Pro tip, I don't know if you can see it or not. Clamp onto your punch or pounding rod with your pair of ice grips. That way you're less likely to smash your fingers. All right, one down. Easy peasy, look at that. Yeah, buddy. There you have it, she a little rusty. We were able to get the pins out of the snowplow bracket. That is awesome. And as smoothly as that went, it scared me a little bit. Usually things don't go that smooth around here. So those came out really easy. Now, it justifies getting this mold board down off of the wall because we can actually attach it back to the snowplow bracket and possibly even use it. Depending on we don't run into other, any other problems. So. Put this up here with the forklift. The forklift is buried behind a truck cab and a skid loader. So I think what we're going to do is try to strap this to the skid loader, get it away from the rack out in the middle of nowhere, and then try to sit it down. I hope this goes as smooth as removing those pins. We got the tires pumped up. We checked the oil. Uh, but last time we were working on this old girl, we replaced the hydraulic line and if you didn't notice in the video we had a pretty substantial fuel drip here anytime i hook up the you just saw it right there if you're paying attention she drips out of there so if i hook up our manual fuel pump here pretty significant drip coming out of this cover right here let's pop this cover off and see if we can't fix that leak the scary part is this something going to come slingshotting out when I take this off? I don't know. Do you guys know? Doesn't feel like it's under any pressure. Doesn't feel overly pliable. Let's get this cover cleaned up. Clean up the surface here. Took my uh, stone, a little lightweight oil, and polished this baby up so she's nice and flat on this side. Gives us the best chance for sealing. I just tooled around here real quick with a light piece of sandpaper that's all worn out uh, just to catch any raised damaged spots that might be sticking up. It's going to put a light amount of grease 
around that seal. And if we're lucky, it was just loose, but I doubt it. I think we need a new seal there. If you know what that seal is, let me know, because I have no idea. I don't even know what this cover does, to be honest with you. Is it like an access port? Or maybe a lift pump goes there, if it had a lift pump? Not for sure. Well, those are definitely tighter than they were when they came out. With any luck, that'll drip less. Hopefully not at all, but not overly optimistic. Let's see what happens here. Hook our fuel pump up manually again. You keep an eye on that. I'm going to let it run. Let's see what happens. All right, all right, all right. I don't see any leaks in there. Maybe we were lucky enough to fix that. That's awesome. Awesome. Let's see what this old girl can do. Hope it still starts. We got it down safely off the wall and we didn't drop it or crush anything. That is a feat within itself. Got to find a better way to put that up there. Uh, what we're doing currently is not, not okay. It's really sketchy. Now that we got it down, I remember there's a few spots on here that we need to repair. We got some ribs, some broken welds, uh, a couple damaged spots here, likely from the broken welds. So we're going to get in here with the wire wheel, clean everything up. This turned out a little bit better uh, than the other side. That side isn't bad, but it's a little more uglier than this side. Just took it in a couple different steps so I didn't completely melt through. Now we're gonna grind this off and make it look smooth again. Kind of. Got my good old friend the flap disc here. Let's see if we can make this look nice again.
Okay, we got it all welded up. I'm not going to say it's the best weld, but it's functional. Mold board's attached to the rib, and the rib is attached to the pin box. We also welded up uh, beneath here where it was broken on the mold board and made it, basically made it solid to this angle iron. So that's all good. Now we're going to work on cleaning these pin boards up. I take sandpaper. This is just a piece of hardwood, dowel rod. With a slot cut in the end of it, stick your sandpaper in there. And wrap it up. This is basically a homemade flap disc. Outside layer gets a little loaded up. Just rip off a little piece. Go back at her. Still gotta go do the other side. Already did the uh, holes on the bracket. So we get this other one cleaned up. Then we just need to make some new pins. I have one inch stock here, but it doesn't quite fit. Turns out that this hole is undersized from one inch. Um, not sure why, but maybe that's so you can't just put one inch stock in there. So we're gonna have to do something different. To fire up the old Atlas here, see if we can turn this blank into something we can use. custom pin. I changed the design from what was in there. I couldn't tell you exactly what was in there, but I know uh, it did have a grease zerk on it, but it wasn't sticking out. This had a roll pin in it to retain the pin, and the grease zerk was, buried, zerk was buried inside there. So no real excuse why I didn't lubricate it, but I just didn't know there was a grease fitting on there. So, I changed it, and I made it such that this shaft has an undercut portion. This part I'm not overly fond of, uh, just because of the space that I had available. I took the hole that was already there and I tapped it. Turns out 5 16 18 works. And then I turned a groove on the pin, so I'm going to 
put a 5 16 18 bolt there to keep it from falling out. That's going to give us the ability to grease this over here with the grease gun and not try to grease it from all the way on the other end. Winning. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the old Rust-Oleum uh, primer here. This is just what I had in the basement. So hope it comes out. Touch all these spots up. Maybe even hit this area in here with black. Uh, just rust preventative at this point. I want to be able to use this thing and we don't have time to paint it the right way hopefully next spring or summer we can get the correct yellow paint maybe some epoxy paint clean the whole thing up and paint it the right way <laughs> we'll see Don't forget to put your pins into the mold board before you wheel in your bracketry. Now I hooked up the grease gun, double checked to make sure my ports would uh, feed grease and also pump out anything that was bad in there. As much as I don't want to, I'm going to go ahead and smear this up with the old silver stuff. I really don't want these getting stuck in there again. Supposedly this will keep it from getting stuck. I don't know. Nothing else will get me all nice and gooey. And all we need to do is get our retaining bolts in. We can freely grease that out here and there. Get these uh, pins greased with our new grease fittings. This one here and the end of the pin will do the pin box. And then this new one over here will do the actual uh, bushing in the mold board. That's going to keep that from getting stuck in there. And this is going to keep this pin box nice and uh, lubricated. Future, I'm going to upgrade this, uh, but this works for now. This traps that pin in the undercut groove section to keep it from falling out, but still allows it to rotate. So we got to put weld on there. Then I got to put the springs on and remove our lifting chain. And uh, we're ready to hook it up to the truck. Some might say, kind of brand new almost not really no just need to get the springs hooked up here and tension still need to remember to tack well those retainer bolts just our spring tension and we're pretty much ready to plow that's pretty easy peasy i don't know Oh, that's just relaxing it. Okay. It's not really stretching it. I think we're just going to go with this sitting here and see what it does. I'm going to wait to tighten the jam nets up, run them up to the bottom until we get it out and plow some snow with it. We might have to run them all the way up, but uh, we'll test it first to see. What do you guys think? She hasn't been hooked up since... 
2020, so two years ago. Just plugged her in. Let's see what she's going to do. Every single time I forget the jack. Still need to spot weld those bolts so they don't come out and it's too far away from the welder all right everything works it's been two years since this has been on the truck and i just couldn't be happier that is awesome no wiring problems to mess around with no other small headaches everything went rather smooth on this we're gonna let this paint dry overnight before we get it out in the snow i was really really itching to get this driveway clean but I didn't want to waste all that effort and time that I put into the paint. So hopefully tomorrow should be all nice and dry, or at least dry enough to get her out in the snow and have some fun. Looks like they plowed this with a massive tractor back here. Fix that belt squeal.
did it. Super happy with the repair. I think we made some upgrades along the way and we can finally use the snow plow again. It's been two years. Good snow plow, good snow plow. All right, now it's time to bring on the summer. Forget all this snow business. I'm ready to put this back up in the rack. If you uh, like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in that section below. And don't forget to tickle that subscribe button your way out. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay warm, stay safe.